Pat makes phenomenal pancakes. It is hands down my favorite part of every morning. We're in Traniacs. A minor crisis right now. I don't know where contraband pool box is. Oh, I see. It's full with other stuff. I guess other clubs don't know our sneaky little pool box. That's cool. That's cool. I'm cool with sharing. Ain't no thang but a water wang. <laughs> I'm gonna be on fire today, guys. Feeling good. It's now been, uh, I think, 11 days since Iron Man Camp Pecci. And just got back four days ago from all my travels. And I thought like, hey, I'm ready. Let's go, let's start training, big swim. It's time, nothing holding me back now. Except for the fact that I'm not fully recovered from Iron Man Camp Pecci because I went to sleep last night at quarter to nine. That's pretty early for me. So that tells me that I need a little bit of a rest. Hence, floaty pants day today. That's right. Loadable pants. It's 2,500 meters later and I have outlasted the entire lane. Might have something to do with the fact that I got in 15 minutes late. But outlasting is outlasting. They don't talk about how people won Survivor, they just talk about who won Survivor. Bet you thought I was getting naked there, eh? Always, always give your swim gear a rinse after a swim. Get the chlorine or salt or whatever you got on your gear washed away, last longer. Cleanliness message is brought to you by Triathlon Terran. Those aren't my version of push-ups. Those are shoulder exercises that I do to keep them's boulders strong while I'm going through this long distance swim training. Three sets of 20 of that. Go do some hanging for maximum studliness. And then we're done. You know, in the winter, I just tolerate commuting because, ooh, I see, I see, I see. Because I'm too cheap to want to pay for parking downtown and I hate sitting and waiting in traffic. It just seems pointless to me when you can be outside riding your bike. And sure, it's a little bit of work. Even in the winter, it's kind of enjoyable. When it starts getting nice out and I can show my face and I can have a little bit of sun on my skin, it is hands down my favorite part of every morning. Best parking spot in downtown because there is the front door and there's my bike. Mm, all right, gang, all right, all right. I'm gonna kick back and relax a little bit here because I've been standing at the desk for the last hour and that is knocking the stuffing out of me because I haven't stood at a standing desk in two weeks. Somebody asked me yesterday how to select a good coach and I wrote down some thoughts about how and why I selected Pat as my coach that you might wanna consider. Number one, assess their pancake making skills. Very, very crucial. As you can tell, Pat makes phenomenal pancakes. If they add a little bit of lemon or orange zest to it, great. Vanilla, great. Pecans, better. Very critical. Number two, do they look better than you in a Speedo? I know it's hard to believe, but I'll admit, Pat looks pretty good in a Speedo. He might only have a regular black Speedo and not a Captain America Speedo, which is outright shameful. So I'll admit, Pat looks better than me in a Speedo, and that was a knock on him. I had to do some really hard thinking about whether or not I was gonna take him on as a coach. Number three, is their son a cephalopod? Kai is one of the world's all-time greatest squids. Major brownie points for good squiddedness. Number four, will they join you for near death defying marathon swims? Pat, yeah, he was in. Back when we did the 27 kilometer marathon swim that happened three, four years ago. Throughout the summer, we were just training separately and he was helping me out with the marathon swim training, but there wasn't really a notion of him joining me. About 10 days before I did the marathon swim, I was like, holy geez, I'm gonna be really lonely and it's gonna be kind of boring and kind of scary. And I want somebody there in the water with me so that it takes my mind off of just swimming. And I called Pat and I was like, hey, you wanna do a marathon swim with me? He was like, 
yeah, okay. And then he asked his wife, the lovely Kara Brown, he was like, hey honey, you mind if I swim 27 kilometers two Sundays from now? Mm. Yeah, so that's Pat. I got a special place in here for Pat. On a serious note though, how to select a coach? That's a really big personal question that depends, I think, primarily on what type of athlete you are and who you mesh with. How I ended up selecting Pat as a coach is I knew that he was an awesome training partner and that I was always motivated by him because as you can see, he's a phenomenally talented athlete. He was very even keeled. He has a regular day job and family and understands that I have a day job and dogs. I knew that the soft skills, like the interactions that we would have, were gonna mesh together because we mesh together as friends. And that was probably the biggest thing to me that I knew the coaching relationship would work. Now, how do you do that? If you're just selecting people off of a website or selecting people in your area and you don't know them well, I would probably try to test them out. See if you can go to some of their training sessions, an exploratory meeting, or at a time when you're not building up to a big race, commit to three month intervals in maybe the off season and see how that goes and feel each other out so that you know if that's gonna be the right coach for you by the time the season rolls around. And I think that that as opposed to do they have certifications and training credentials and are they a good triathlete themselves? I don't think that's nearly as important as are they somebody that you can interact with day to day and you jive with their style of communication and just like their general mojo. Now that I think about it, that goes in line with what I say that triathlon needs to be something that is a part of your lifestyle and not something that you just do off to the side. Because if you're looking at hiring a triathlon coach as somebody that needs to fit into your lifestyle and meshes with you, then it's not going to be something you add into your triathlon training program as like a nuisance. It's kind of just part of the overall lifestyle that you adopt. And as I said a couple days ago, when you're communicating well with your coach and you're both on the same page, it's easier to say yes. I think that's good advice. Let's try that. Well, that's a day. I am so back in love with Winnipeg now that it's not blistering cold out. I don't know if you saw yesterday, but Mrs. Triathlon Taryn was in the office with Mel and we we're sorting out some ideas that we've got for triathlonterran.com. If you go and check that out right now, it's pretty awful. I kind of just put it up as a placeholder and added some pictures in the yellow background, but we got some good stuff coming up for the, the dot com of the triathlonterranisms. Beyond that, I think it's home time. How about I see y'all later, Traniacs? Red light, green light. <laughs>